Hi all, let's have a look at the round 5 game of Leela Chass in TCEC Season 13 Division 4. So the round 5 game was against Deus Ex 1.0, which is another neural network engine. Here is a statement by Albert Silver, Albert Silver, the author of Deus Ex, uh, which was made. Uh, so Deus Ex is a neural network trained by Albert Silver from unique non Leela data exclusively from human played games. The engine that executes this network is LC0 developed by the Leader Chess Zero team. The code for training the neural network so that it can run in the LC0 binary also comes from the Leela uh, Zero from the Leela Chess Zero project. Deserved credit to the LC0 team will also be given in any citation in the engine in the following form. Deus Ex Neural Network by Albert Silver, powered by LC0. So this was the statement made by Albert Silver. So this is a very interesting clash. Uh, so is the zero approach of Leela playing itself better than training from Grandmaster games? Uh, this is an interesting test. Now, a little, also a little bit of trivia, by the way, I, I, I found about Deus Ex. The new Latin term Deus Ex Machina is a translation of the Greek phrase and means literally a god from a machine. <laughs> machina, in this case, refers to a crane that held a god over the stage in ancient Greek and Roman drama. The practice of introducing a god at the end of a play to unravel and resolve the plot dates from at least the 5th century BC. Euripides uh, was one playwright who made frequent use of the device. Since the late 1600s, Deus Ex Machina, Machina, Machina has been applied in English to, to unlikely saviours and improbable events that bring order out of chaos in sudden and surprising ways. So there's the background anyway. Interesting name choice. C5 from Deus Ex. So we have a, a Sicilian defense. Here's the end of the book, E6. Okay, so this is the uh, Timonov or Bastrikov variation, as it's known. So that's the end of the book for both neural networks. D4, we go into an open Sicilian. Knight C3, Queen C7, G3, which does not only finish as the bishop, but also provides support for bishop F4 here, potentially. So bishop g2, knight f6, white castles, knight takes, queen takes. This does allow a tempo gain. Uh, we have bishop f4 counterattacking the black queen instead of moving the queen. d6. On bishop takes d4 here, I believe white gets a small edge. This position is a small edge for white. Uh, as an example, well, if d5, then white can just win a pawn there, and there's not too much compensation taking on b2 there's rook b1 and bishop b7 and uh yeah i mean it's it seems to be a nice edge here anyway so that's avoided actually we have d6 which does create a liability on the d file potentially uh, a target on this d file queen d2 h6 and that's just hold on hold on here rook 81 e5 compromises a bit the d5 square and bishop e3 and now bishop takes e3 is played it is actually possible, it seems, for black to have castled, considered castling. Now this position, this seems to be a way of white gain, uh, gaining an advantage. So keeping control of the d5, trying to exchange off queens. This position here, it should be a, a small edge for white. If we follow this through, white could end up with nice pawns in the center with a small edge. So it's an interesting decision though, black playing bishop takes e3. And Leela actually takes with the F pawn, which looks a little bit strange, you might think. But it's to keep the pressure up on D6. Uh, now, yeah, it's a positional pawn sacrifice after Bishop E6. So, creative stuff, just sacking the pawn here. Leela takes that pawn, Rook C8, and Queen takes, so the Queen's come off. Rook F2, we have Knight G4. Rook E2 protecting E3, Knight goes back. Rook E D2. King e7. Now knight d5 check. Now this is undoubling white's pawns here after taking, but there's nice blockade squares intuitively for black on the dark squares here. And k 
King d6 is the first blockade e4 but there's obviously a nice c5 blockade square as well as well as c file pressure that white has to handle h5 c3 b6 rook c2 h4 b3 so playing for c4 and maybe b4 c5 one day h takes h takes a5 rook dc1 knight d7 so that blockade square is now more evident uh, on this, well, this you might think is annoying. The king could step in uh, here with a small edge. It's no big deal. So knight d7, c4, knight c5. Uh, now we have a3 suppressed because you know knight takes b3. So we have rook c3 with maybe the slow plan of a3 and b4. Uh, rook hc8, g4 though. Now this is clever stuff from Leela. G4 here. Pawn wasn't doing much on g3. This also opens up the third rank. Knight b7, g5. Now, this is again really clever. This diagonal is available to the bishop. But there's also another clever possibility after king c5, which Leela plays here. I wonder if he can guess. Okay. g6. Yeah, a nice pawn sack idea. This is ignored actually. Knight d6, ignoring that pawn sack. On f takes, I believe white gets a small edge, actually with the f file, uh, among other things like rook g3 to target that g6 pawn, then there's e5 target as well. So this could, not, could end up being very nice for white, yeah, targeting these pawns. So it's kind of ignored knight d6. Uh, I mean, we can look at f6 as well for a moment. Here, uh, this kind of scenario is... Uh, interesting why well, it should be okay here uh, so anyway we have knight d6 g takes which does kind of isolate a bit the e pawn potentially with no f6 so f6 was maybe interesting to consider now we have rook g3 this rook goes to f8 uh, so rook g5 hitting e5 that's defended a3 uh, now king d4 was played here which is an interesting move because it actually <laughs> incorporates well it's actually a subtle uh, tactical blunder which I think most engines especially in higher divisions well I think even in this division would pick up on with brute force this is actually a tactical mistake here to play king d4 uh, I wonder if you can see why, if if you want that as an exercise, I'll give you five seconds now to pause the video and do your own analysis. Okay, funny enough, Leela just <laughs> didn't pick up on this error and played Rook G3. So yeah, both neural networks have played <laughs> in a tactically embarrassing way for an engine competition because traditionally engines are meant to be tactically accurate accurate so here yeah uh there is a forcing sequence with c5 it turns out uh this blocks the black king's escape and now this move threatens basically rook d1 checkmate and for example g6 checkmate so what does black do here c4 to give c5 that can be stopped with b4 after takes takes there's back to this problem of the checkmate if c3 then rook c, c takes c3 threatening checkmate again if knight takes e4 then checkmate uh, so what does black do here if if the only move is rook f3 that's just losing a rook <laughs> basically and, and and probably the other one soon after so it was a small tactical error here to play king d4 which both of them didn't pick up so this is really like a human game in the tournament this game between these two quite amusing uh so rook g3 is played king c5 rook gc3 now uh, it looks as though for a moment they're going to write repeat there's there's a few repetitive moves being played here yeah, uh, rook f4 rook g6 Rook f6, we have rook g3, rook f4, rook e1, rook f8, rook b1, rook f6, c3, king d4 again here, 
rook h3, king c5, rook c3, king d4. Some re repetitions, basically. Now here, uh, rook g6 was played, rook f6. Uh, you might be wondering, okay, hang on a sec. What about knight takes e4, you might be wondering. Here, check, I believe, is strong for white. This position, pushing through with that d pawn, is strong for white here. It's a good position for white. Is actually the past c pawn now, and it's good good ending for white. So actually, rook f6 was played. Rook g3 again. Rook f4. Rook e1. Rook f6. Rook c1. Rook f8. And I thought actually they'd be repeating here to agree a drill, a draw or something. Actually, here rook a7, which is another mistake tactically. Rook f4. White has a small edge, uh, but this move. Uh, Lila does pick up on something tactical now and plays rook b1 with the threat of b4. Uh, we have king d4. For example, if rook f4 here, check this position with rook c2 threatens checkmate. And if knight takes, this is just winning the knight. So what does black do here? If king d3, this position. White is doing very well here after the check. Uh, yeah, it's it's not very nice uh, here. Um, for example, here there's check, um, and nope, actually that's not in my notes. So, but there there is something up with this position. Hundred points if you can guess this position. Uh, I have I have basically bishop f1 black taking on f1 here. Yeah, I should have I should have covered king e3 or king d4. I uh, maybe um maybe c c5 looks pretty strong but there's uh okay. So yeah, let me know about this position. But my notes indicate rook takes f1 would be uh f best best move for a specific reason and here white would have an advantage uh, okay so king king d4 was played rook g3 king c5 and now b4 check here eight takes eight takes uh, king takes c4 check now if king d4 here check this position ends up winning the rook on f8. That's a loose rook to pick up on f8. So that's why here, uh, with the king being dragged over to the f file by force, that in this position, yeah, uh, black gave up the exchange with rook takes in this in this particular position. So why not exchange up? Uh, so now you know with with a clear advantage. Check. Uh, we have king d4 rook. E1, and there's a bit of work to do here, though. A bit. We have knight d6, rook g6, but the work was kind of diminished now because black played knight takes e4, which I thought, when looking at the game, was tactically erroneous because of another forcing sequence starting with rook g4. Surely the pawn is queening. I thought uh, more resistance would have been with knight c4, for example. You know, white would would have more resistance to to deal with. Uh, as an example, continuation, the king might go up there. That's that's a disaster. But black could could play rook b7 and be stubborn. So, but that didn't happen. That didn't happen. We didn't see much uh, here because knight takes e4 was played. <laughs> now we just have rook g4. Uh, so clearly, if if rook f4 here, then white just takes and then distracts the king, you know, with d6, uh, which uh, which is not quite what happened. Black played the check, and now rook f4, very similar to what happened basically, just with the king on g2 instead, uh, and now just taking, and then rook takes e4, just distracting the king to queen the pawn. So an abrupt end. <laughs> Actually, Deus, Deus Ex Machina came in and <laughs> made an abrupt decision. Okay, um, 
Okay. No. So the battle of the neural networks there. And quite amusing, really. <laughs> it's like a human game. They they really tactically blundered. One tactically blundered and the other didn't pick up on it. So uh amazing strength positioning, both both amazingly strong positioning. But this is this is just this goes with the territory. So graphics cards, great positional play, a bit weak on the tactics sometimes <laughs> on the forcing move sequences. Comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciate it. Thanks very much.